guys, it's Robert here. I wanted to share with you some ways that I'm using the Jamaican Plane update that just recently came with Sonar. So I don't believe we've even begun to scratch the surface of what we can really do with this yet. I believe we're going to have some people a lot smarter than myself that's going to come out with some stuff that's going to blow everyone's mind. I just want to show you some quick ways that I'm using it. One of the first things I started doing is using the MIDI record feature, which is awesome. So I got my addictive drums honed in exactly like I liked them, and then I recorded them. What was cool was I was able to go up here and sync the drums to the tempo that the guitar player was playing, record that section, splice it together, and um, I didn't have to do any tempo automation on the timeline or anything like that, and uh, it was pretty cool. It worked out very, very well. The other thing I'm using it for is for this, um, it's sort of a Fox dynamic delay it's sort of a it's a fake one but it works and because I use only stock plugins here within sonar I haven't been able to find a way really to get a dynamic delay because the delays that come with it do not have a sidechain option and every time you try to put them onto a bus and you try to route the audio it seems like it never it, it doesn't jive so I finally found a way to do that here with this aux track what I did was I created an aux track I sent my vocal, de my I've called it vocal delay. I sent it to this aux track, which is the vocal delay. The input is from the lead box, the lead vocals here. The output goes to the mix bus. I have my vanilla surprise, rock hard buns, free uh, delay plug in here, which has got a lot more there, as you can see, chorus, phaser. I actually, I really like the rock hard buns. They've got a lot of a lot of good plugins there. Um, yet again, totally free. I don't believe in cracked plugins. I believe in free plugins. Those are cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so I got the vocal here that's being sent to the aux track. And then on the next thing in the signal chain here is this compressor, which basically just keeps that vocal from going over a threshold that I want it. I don't want it to go over. So in order to get this vocal to trail off at the end of what the singer is singing, I have to send more of the signal to that track. If I send more of the signal to the track, then I get my vocals to be louder. So the way that I found around this was I just put a compressor on there. So if it gets too loud, it just compresses that vocal, that vocal, uh, waveform, that vocal signal, I should say, that's coming into the, the aux track and only allows the delay to exit. So I'll show you what that sounds like. I'm chipping, I'm chipping, I'm chipping now. I'm chipping, I'm chipping, I'm chipping now. What would you do if you woke up somebody new? Would you... Okay, so you can hear that when the singer is singing, the delay is not really as prevalent. Of course, I've got it coming in more so on some places than on others. As the song builds, the delay gets a little bit thicker. Um, but in these places where I want it to really trail off, I just crank up the delay send uh, volume, basically the send level. And um, because it goes, causes the vocal to shoot up way too high, I just I'm threw chipping, a uh, chipping, compressor on as you can see here, it I'm works chipping, I'm chipping, I'm chipping now. just as soon as that vocal what would, would get to that do point. If you woke up somebody new, would you pretend it was all a dream? Okay, so that's one way that I'm using the aux tracks uh, to try to create a basically a fake dynamic delay. But hey, it worked. So another way was the, uh, yeah, I've already talked about the drums. So another way was I have split my bass up into lows and mids and I'm routing each one of these to a new aux track that's entitled bass imagine that but it's the summed bass in the sense that I can send as much mids or as much low end to this bass aux track as I want and then I can EQ it globally that way as well so what I've done on the lows is I got a multiband compressor that only goes up to 250 Hertz Everything above that is not being used. And then I can actually compress just the low end. 
And I guess it might help if I was over by the base here. So you see I'm getting 3 dBs of gain reduction there. Okay. Now, on the flip side of this, I've got my mids. And if you look at the uh, pro channel here, basically everything 250 hertz and below is being cut off with a, a high pass filter. So this allows me to blend to my taste those lows and the mids. So that's another cool way to uh, be able to use the aux tracks. So if you guys have any other ways that you're using them, please share with the community because we need to know what you're using them for because I'm almost positive this is a big game changer that we have yet to discover all of the coolness that will be associated with this. And um, if you have any tips or tricks on how to use these whatsoever, please, like I said, share them with us. We want to know what you're stinking doing. So y'all have a blessed day, and I will talk to y'all later.